during all your persecutions and the afflictions that you are enduring. To this end, we always pray for you, asking that our Father, that our God will make you worthy of his call and will, will, will fulfill by his power every good resolve and work of faith, so that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him, according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. Today's psalm is Psalm 32, verses 1 through 8. It can be found in your bulletin. We will read the psalm responsibly by whole verse. Happy are they whose transgressions are forgiven and whose sin is put away. Happy are they to whom the Lord refuses no guilt and in whose spirit there is no harm. While I held my tongue, my bones withered away because of my groaning all day long. For your hand was heavy upon me day and night. My moisture was dried up as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not conceal my guilt. I said, I will not confess my transgressions to the Lord. Then you forgave me the guilt of my sin. Therefore, all the faithful will make their prayers to you in time of trouble. When the great waters overflow, they shall not reach them. You are my hiding place. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. tax collector and was rich. He was trying to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not, because he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him, because he was going to pass that way. When Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried down and was happy to welcome him. All who saw it began to grumble and said, He has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Look, half of my possessions, Lord, I will give to the poor, and if I've defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Then Jesus said to him, 
Today salvation has come to this house because he too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek out and to save the lost. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. <coughs> what if Jesus was going to, to invite himself into your house? guests just to straighten things up every once in a while in our home. And that's what this story is about. It's about home. It's about Jesus making his home with Zacchaeus and making his home with us. The long, the short, and the tall. I have a good friend uh, who, who lost his life years ago and wrote a book about it. A friend of mine is a priest. And it was one of the, the descriptions he gave about her. She was my home. My home. And by that, I imagine it meant the safe harbor, a place of sucker love and hope, a place to go to and to grow and be nurtured. Home. I was reading the other day about uh, um, this, um, this concept of original oneness. It's kind of a uh, biopsychological theory, I think, but you know, when you're in the womb, when a fetus is in the womb, they're at one with the mother, all surrounded by all those fluids and being nurtured constantly. No, no um, separation, but oneness. And then this amazing, terrible thing happens. They get born. They come out into the world, and all sorts of things happen. And for the rest of our lives, we keep seeking for that oneness again. Because we keep encountering one injury after another, one disappointment after another, one feeling of isolation and fear after another. Amongst the joy, amongst the, the, the experience of love, but we're constantly, according to this theory, trying to get back to that sense of oneness, that sense of home. St. Augustine famously writes, um, O oh Lord, we are restless for you, and we will never find our rest until we find you. We have to find our rest and our relationship with God, out of which everything else will flow. It's not an anodyne, it's not a solution to everything, but it's certainly the place where we we'll begin. <clears throat> And the great good news we have 
from this passage is that God's on the lookout for us. God, uh, Jesus is here to be the living God who seeks out, searches for us like the shepherd and the sheep keeps looking for us. And then he finds um, this, this, uh, this man called Zacchaeus crawling up a tree just so he can catch a glimpse of Jesus. Would you do that? <coughs> Part of the question here is how hungry are you for Jesus? I mean, this is an honor-shame society go back to the certain context, you know. A rich guy in fine clothing is not going to crawl up a sycamore tree. Not in this suit, I'm not. <laughs> he doesn't care. Because he has that deep desire for Jesus for what Jesus might be able to offer, and perhaps that oneness, perhaps that, that sense of home. And, and why does Jesus pick Zacchaeus? Because he's there. Because he has that deep desire, which he is shameless in expressing. We were just talking about uh, uh, Go in um, the uh, Sunday school, you know, about uh, this terrible word. It begins with an E, it's not Episcopalian. Evangelism. Thank you! <laughs> that fearful word. That's what Zacchaeus is doing. He's being shamelessly um, pleading. For this deep need within. It's a confession of his deep need. Are we in that position? Are we ready to shimmy up a sycamore tree so we can see Jesus? Because when that deep desire meets the, the, the searching of God, something happens to Zacchaeus. Jesus finds a home in him and he becomes a different person, a generous person, a person who is more concerned about the world around him than he is concerned for himself. He becomes an evangel, a person embodied by the good news, a person embodied by the love of God, when God makes his home with us. My brothers and sisters, we live in a difficult world, and we always will. But the world is hungry for that oneness. And it doesn't matter what end of the political spectrum you're on, or what level on the social or economic scales you are. We're hungry for God. We're hungry for home. We're hungry for that place of nurture and oneness. And here at St. Clement's, we offer ourselves as just such that place. Imagine that Jesus is driving down Ridge Road in his Prius. Because that's, of course, is what he would be driving. Mm -hmm. So he's driving down Ridge Road, heading south, and to the right, he sees this building. Does he turn in? Does he recognize it as his own? What is to prevent him from turning in? And then turning in, and looking around, and then doing the most <coughs> amazing thing that people have done here. Time and time again, this courageous thing of walking through that door. <clears throat> Why? 
Why do they do it? Because there is a deep desire for finding the home of God. A place where they can hear God. A place where God seems to hear them. It, it is that which we are here for. Not simply for us to uh, enjoy each other's company, although we do a lot of that. But to be a place of welcome and invitation as best we can. I remember um, uh, Bishop Sam, uh, my old bishop from uh, South Carolina, of blessed memory now, we were off abroad. We were at a Lambeth conference, strangely enough, in England, and we were walking through some church properties, and he noticed some weeds here and weeds there. And I've never forgotten, of course, he had this wonderful Mississippi accent, you know. You know, Jamie, you can tell a lot about church by the way they tend to. And their grounds. Hey, would you come down here and tell us, in the spirit of stewardship, about how we've been doing in that regard? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I am pleased to stand before a congregation that supports the church with both time and talent. But we need more. Uh, this year, thing. Ooh, that's uh, right. I'm supposed to let my light shine. Uh, <laughs> thank you. I forgot that this morning. And I have my notes, too. We've, been a, we've had a very busy year, and we couldn't have done it without the support of the congregation. Your week-to-week -week support. And we also were blessed this year to have two very generous congregate donations that allowed us to address some really significant issues. You may have noticed that in the cat, everybody was mentioning the parking lot, which has now been resealed. That has only bought us a couple, three years until it needs to be replaced. But we have time now to address it and address it properly. We have also painted the church in Davis Hall and done significant minor repairs that you won't necessarily see, but any of you owning a home or even living in any kind of residential setting know there's constant windows need caulking, fire extinguishers need upgrading, exit signs need fixing, and uh, for us, our church was flooding every time it rained. We got our French drain fixed last week, and it's beautiful. Now we don't have to look at the gutters coming down that side of the building, and I think it really enhances it. Christ walking down the street, driving down the street, I think you'd be pleased, especially with our new patio, which now welcomes you into Davis Hall. And we just need more hands. The vestry can't do it by itself. I could not have gotten anywhere near accomplished this year without Doug Blackburn's support, as well as Corey's and the other vestry members. We, we, we need your talents with, to help us. It's a big job. Any of you own a home, you know it. If you walk around your yards, you see things. We need that kind of see something, say something here, so things don't get ahead of us to the point that it's problematic. Um, the other thing that we have coming up yet is we have the furnishings to do for our patio. So it's a place of respite as well as welcome. And we will be putting up a railing so that we can be pulling off our now exposed edge. I hope you're all pleased with now that you can see that end of the building uh, with our red door over there. Oh, did I hit everything? Where's Father? There you are. Sounds good to me, Dale. Okay. Come and help us. We need you. Thank you. <laughs> Dale's done an amazing, amazing job, and she definitely deserves that applause. Um, uh, but she's going off the vestry, along with Corey and Doug. Doug, come on down here. Doug. 
Hub nuts has a way around a screwdriver. <laughs> I need a few tools. other tools. A few <laughs> other tools. Yeah. And I'm your treasurer, but I'm not going to talk about money. Uh, I'm going to talk about the other two T's called time and talent. You all have talent, and if you don't, we'll teach you some talent. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Jamie and I got into the audiovisual world um, necessarily. Neither one of us really knew what we were doing, and we were able to somewhat stream and services for us and report for you and all those stuff. Yeah. And I need some help doing it, as well as help doing some other things around here. <clears throat> I would like the opportunity to sit in a pew with my wife and enjoy the service rather than working it. Okay. Um, we need help with acolytes. So, as far as I consider time, you know, time to the church is not time that you're sitting in your pew. Okay? That's time you're actually getting to the church and helping out. So, we need more people to help out okay? so that, you know, we don't get burned out. Okay? That's the other issue. As well as we do need your funds, which has been hit pretty hard here during uh, stewardship. So, if you have any questions, see me um, or call the office or Jamie. Anything you want to help doing, we would appreciate it. And uh, I'm, I tend to be the handyman around here. Uh, Trish keeps me busy every week. She reminds <laughs> me of something I need to fix. Right? So, um, anyway, so if we could get some more help, that would be much appreciated. And thank you all for watching. Thank you, home of Jesus Christ. But it's also in here. So we can walk out there in that world and be the home that this world needs so much. Amidst all the division and tribalism and all the rest of it. For us not to join in that party. But to offer them this one. The feast of Christ. A home of the blessing of Christ in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
We know our need of God's mercy. <clears throat> that the name of Jesus may be glorified, let us commend our lives and all that we have to God's care, saying, Lord, in your mercy. <clears throat> o oh God, you are no discriminator of persons. Look then with love on all those who in this world are disregarded or despised or lost or looking. May all who seek you find a home in your heart and in the house of your church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, lover of all who wander and who seek, you have taken up your dwelling among those who desire life and those who need compassion and understanding. Open their eyes to your presence as Jesus opened the eyes of Zacchaeus by eating at his table. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, you have given your command that the riches of this world be turned to the service of the needy and the poor. Grant that those of means be inspired in generosity and love to give what they can where they believe you most desire. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, May the desire to follow Christ consume our whole being and make our hearts and homes receptive to your call. With the same zeal, Zacchaeus sought Jesus and responded to his presence. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, may the light of your presence shine brightly in the darkness of conflict throughout the world, in Ukraine, and in so many places. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, please comfort all in need for health for the sick and food for the hungry and for those in any kind of trouble, and especially Carl, Margaret, Susan, Jim, Chuck, Bill W., Bill H., Anna Marie, Mark, Kim, Ted, Sharon, Fred, John T, Margaret C, Marge, Margie, Mary Elizabeth, Walton, Reba, Deborah, John D, Scott, Marty, Fran, Madison, Zane, Van, Don, Michaela, George, Jean, Dakota, Jacob, and Deacon Judith. Lord, in your mercy. Your Blessed are those who have fought the good fight, who we love but see no longer, and now are bathed in the bright light of God's nearer presence especially Barbara Martin, late of this parish, whose life we will celebrate this afternoon. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for those who serve in the armed forces and for their families, for their service, and sacrifice, and especially Marnus, Jerry, Nick, Joyce, Brandon, Maggie, Stephen, Jake, Rose, Gavin, David, and Noah. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those who celebrate birthdays, especially Katie McDonald, Chris Thomas, Doug Blackburn, and Emily Nicholson, and for those who celebrate their wedding anniversaries. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. I ask you to pray your own prayers now, aloud or silently. I give you thanks for this beautiful season. 
give thanks for this place that you've made us stewards over for your sake and for the welfare of your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I invite all those who wish special blessings of any kind to come forward to the altar. Second time's the charm, Doug. That's right. <laughs> Almighty God, we do give you thanks and praise for this, the life of your servant, Doug. And you continue to grow in grace from moment to moment until he is perfected in you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We do give you thanks for the life and spirit of this community of faith. And invite all those who have special announcements to offer those announcements in that spirit of thanksgiving. I'm grateful for the blood drive that we had on Monday. And tell us a little bit about that. We had uh, 32 people present when they came to give blood. We had eight deferrals, which is a lot for some reason. Maybe people aren't eating enough or something. But anyway, uh, we had eight deferrals. But in spite of that, we still made our goal. Our goal was 25. And so drop ins took care of those gaps and a couple of power rates, so that worked great. Uh, special thanks to the folks that came and helped, especially Lee and Joe. I think Joe's here this morning. I can see it. Uh, Alex and, of course, Doug. Doug's always here. So <laughs> but there's something else that you need to remember. And some of you may not even be aware of it because I don't think we made a big deal about it. But you will be if you don't have any blood, you're going to be receiving an email from the Red Cross. And what they're going to do is have a list of merchants. They're going to ask you to choose a merchant and re uh, reply back to the Red Cross. It's a real email. It's not somebody trying to pull something on you. What's going to happen is that uh, people, if you say you want Walmart, Walmart will send you a $5 gift certificate. So that will come back in another email. So don't delete that. That's five bucks. <laughs> I'm grateful for next Sunday. We're going to have a big feast next Sunday um, uh, to wrap up our stewardship. This is stewardship season. <laughs> stewardship season. Be sure to get your pledges in. Um, and we will have a baptism. Uh, Bobby's going to be baptized, and uh, we're looking forward to that. Um, are there other, other announcements that need to be made at this time? Savior God, as Zacchaeus was blessed to receive Jesus into his home and was responded with generosity to his gift, so may we, those who we have remembered, be blessed in his name, so that it may be glorified without end. We make this prayer in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Mighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in everlasting life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Greet each other in the name of Christ.
Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God.
with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah.
us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of Teresa of Avila. Trust in God. Let nothing disturb you. Let nothing frighten you. All things pass, God never changes. Patience achieves all it strives for. He who has God finds he lacks nothing. God alone suffices. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Serve the Lord. Thank you.